share with you today, um, especially Dennis and Dino have asked me to speak, I kept coming back to one thought and one thing in mind, hell. <laughs> well, not hell actually, but Dante's Inferno. I guess referencing the epic poem written during the Middle Ages is one of the risks you have to take when you ask a literature teacher to speak, but so be it. So here it is. For those of you who are not familiar with Dante's Inferno, it's the first part of his epic poem entitled The Divine Comedy, where Dante describes in excruciating detail a journey through the nine levels of hell. And during the course of the story, you descend to different levels of hell and learn that each of the levels is reserved for people who have committed certain sins. You see, sin and fear of sin was really big during the Middle Ages. And in Dante's Inferno, some sins were worse than others, so some punishments were worse. In Dante's Hell, your punishment was supposed to fit your crime. So for instance, if you were lustful, your punishment was to be blown about by gusts of wind for eternity. And if you were dishonest with money, you'd be boiled in pitch for eternity. And if you were a hypocrite, you'd be forced to wear a lead cloak for eternity. Well, I'm not here today to suggest that my audience here at ACS will be heading to Dante's Inferno, although there is no <laughs> And though I think the fear of being boiled in pitch was probably an effective motivational tool for TEDx audiences in the Middle Ages, I want to point out something else about Dante's Inferno. In Dante's Inferno, the first level of hell, you can barely see it right up top there, which he called the best of you all, which I can imagine is like a contemporary dentist waiting room. I hope I didn't offend any dentists in the crowd. It was reserved for the indifferent. Think about this for a moment. You could be sent to hell just for being indifferent. We can define, we can define indifference as lacking in feeling for or against something. It's a certain mediocrity. You could be sent to hell and punished in the inferno simply because you had lacked feeling. If during your life you never made a stand, you never made a difference, you were never passionate about things, that was reason enough to send you to hell. And guess what? While you were there, you would chase a waving flag, never to catch it, while being stung all over your body by bees for eternity. So many people, and I'm sure many in this audience today, believe that life is happening to you. You throw your hands up in the air and you feel an utter lack of control and you say, my decision on this subject does not matter. I get it. Many of you are young and so many of big decisions about your family, your move, or where you're going to live are out of your, out of, are out of your reach. My message though for you all is to begin to make very passionate decisions that are in your control. You have passionate conviction over so many decisions that you feel that you don't have. And if indifference was once enough of a sin to earn a trip to hell, it seems fairly important to avoid it at all costs. Now, I'm not sure if you've read my little blurb, that my bio blurb in the, uh, in the handout, um, but I went to university for and started as in radio production and as a DJ. My kids think this is very cool. Um, for some reason, people like my voice on air, plus, I saved the radio station lots of money in microphones because they didn't need any, but uh, every morning I went to my job and I was completely indifferent. I certainly didn't like it. I didn't hate it every day, but I just went to it. That was my job. I earned checks and I went about my life. I was spending my time passing through my existence and it frightened me. And so I quit. End of story. Well, end of that story. And I bartended to pay the bills, and I spent some time trying to figure out what I was really passionate about. And then in asking Dennis why I was selected to speak again, he referenced that I have a pickaxe hanging from my ceiling. It's my homage to Caddyshack, the classic 80s movie. And I use the pickaxe as my metaphor for the value of education. Dennis also reminisced that on the first day of school, I took his class to the black box up there to scream as loudly as possible. He also said that he never met anyone quite like me who taught just like I did. I'm going to take that as a compliment, Dennis. I'm not quite sure if it was a compliment, but I'm going to take it as a compliment. Um, and then I continued to challenge and probe. I also loathed indifference in my classroom. Never a fence sitter be. 
I repeat over and over again. I will chalk this all up to the fact that I have not been, nor ever will be, indifferent. I quit a job that I was indifferent about, and I found an absolute passionate calling. And while sustaining bumps and bruises along my 18 years of teaching, I continue to care deeply and vehemently about my teaching. As the author Elie Wiesel once stated, the opposite of love is not hate, it's indifference. The opposite of art is not ugliness, it's indifference. And the opposite of faith is not heresy, it's indifference. And the opposite of life is not death, it's indifference. The opposite of life is not death, it's indifference. You have control over what you think and how you respond and how you act, and thoughts are not facts, and you have the ability to control your thoughts. Throwing your hands up in the air, not actively, passionately playing a part, the part you play is indifference. I have been so impressed in my eight months here at ACS with the students that I teach every day and many of you that I don't even know your names, I just see you in the hallway. And I hope that you all will avoid the crippling ambivalence that strikes so many young people. I often ask my students on the first day of class their range of emotions when they ride on a roller coaster. And I personally love this old rickety roller coaster that Lane found this picture. This is the exact roller coaster I grew up on. I love this, not the exact one, but it's just like this. Anyway, your range of emotions when you ride on a roller coaster. So students will write down that they feel nervous, thrills, anxiety, excitement, fear, relief after. And then when the ride is all over, I ask them, do most people want to get back on again, even though you just went that, through that whole range of emotions? I hope it is. And then every year, I hope that this is my classroom is like. I push for the range of emotions, and I hope that the majority of my students would want to come back again. This, ultimately, I hope, Dennis, is the reason why I'm here today. Because I care every single day, and I care twice today on Saturday with my students. I'm certain that this is what life is like when it's lived passionately. And if I could change the title of my speech, I would change it to this. I just came up with this. It's hard to be indifferent when you're riding on a roller coaster. It's hard to be indifferent when you're riding on a roller coaster. Please, live your life with passion with gusto, with verve, and avoid the easy path of indifference. It is so easy to live indifferently, but it's not a roller coaster. Live life passionately, or be ready for Dante's swarm of bees to be coming for you. <laughs> Dennis Adina, thank you for inviting me.